参与差的。Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's wait a little bit and, uh, until more people show up. Okay. Maybe a couple of minutes, uh, maybe two or three minutes. All right. Okay, so three minutes past the hour. Thank you for joining. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, so yeah, today we have Yulin. Uh, I'll be talking about Quark. Uh, at another runtime uh, written in Rust. So yeah, take it away. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank, uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yep, yeah. Thank you. Here, I will introduce the Quark. It is a high performance secure container runtime. Yeah, uh, yeah. for the secure runtime, uh, we have three, oh, let me present that. We have major three major dimension. First is uh, security, another is performance. Here we we are working on this Linux compatible runtime container, container runtime. So we need it provides Linux compatibility. Yeah, yeah. Here for the Quark, we are um, we are use we are security is based on the KVM based. That's a virtual machine that's based the isolation, and now also we are using the secure program language that's Rust, and. Uh, and for the for the performance, uh, yeah, we are we are designed the dedicated for the containerized workload, and uh, it's optimized for the multi core multi multi core CPU, and uh, using this uh, high performance uh, high performance language Rust, and uh, our goal is to provide this Linux compatibility. So far, we already implement uh, one uh, two. Hundred tens, more than two hundred ten system car. In future, we will add more system car and uh, provide more compatibility. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, in for the for the secure container runtime, uh, so far in the market uh, there is uh, uh, another security runtime, secure container runtime. First is Kata, another is Hivizer. Yeah. Yeah. And 
Kata is uh, based on the virtual machine, and uh, it is a uh, uh, more uh, there's a straightforward implementation that is uh, running the uh, container inside a virtual machine. Uh, in in this mode, uh, for virtual machine, actually we have uh, we have Linux kernel. That's a common design and common architecture that we have Linux kernel, we have QMO, and we also can run different OS inside this uh, in this virtual machine. Like it, it could be Linux kernel or the Windows kernel. Mm. Actually, we can uh, based on this architecture, actually we can we can get some performance opportunity. Mm. For example, for the QMO, QMO it is a it is a general uh, it's general purpose that's a virtual, uh, virtual machine monitor. It, is a, it supports not only Linux, it, it can support other OS. This, uh, uh, but uh, for our Linux container runtime, we only need to support Linux workload. So this opportunity to optimize QMO, uh, we get a better VMM to get a better performance. Also, uh, also we can, uh, we can for the Kata, he's running inside Linux kernel. That's uh, uh, we can also got some opportunity to, uh, opportunity to optimize that. That's uh, Linux kernel is designed to run on real hardware, but for the container runtime in our uh, in our target environment, it is running on the Linux kernel. So we can get some benefit to to support uh, to support the Linux kernel. Mm, and uh, Linux kernel also support all kind of hardware and device, but uh, because uh, our container runtime only run on service uh, server hardware, so they have multi core and have um, have x x sixty four CPU, uh, uh, sixty four bit CPU. Maybe in future we can support this ARM sixty four, uh, and it does support video and audio, and uh, um, it, it it don't need to support other devices, for example, the software, uh, the software disk driver, that's, a, that's a still supported in the Linux kernel now. Yeah, so we can get benefit to support only limited hardware, uh, li limited hardware, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and the Linux kernel support all kind of workload, uh, but uh, for, for, the, uh, for the secure container worker target, its workload is uh, majority is for the cloud native workload. It's, uh, his work item is TCP, TCP, TCP IP protocol, and also may have this hardware disk IO, may also have this, um, this cloud based this IO, for example, IRS3, that's a virtual, virtual disk IO, that's eventually that data stored in the cloud. You know, we can do all, more optimization for that. So, uh, so we designed a, designed a environment that's, a, that's cool, uh, Quark just the target for the container runtime, uh, just just for the uh, container workload. Yeah, uh, compare with that common Linux virtual machine solution. Uh, Quark is it, the developer is uh, developed a Quark kernel. It is uh, it will just work as a Linux kernel and provide the Linux kernel compatible system call to the that's the Linux container application. Uh, Application, yeah, and uh, for the VMM side, uh, we pro uh, we provide uh, uh, the the Q weather. It is uh, working as a uh, VMM, and different than the that's QMO plus Linux kernel solution. The Q weather is uh, can only support the Q kernel. Also, Q kernel can only run in with the Q weather, and the Q weather is uh, can only run inside the KVM plus the Linux kernel. So that we can do all, do more optimization based on this, uh, this uh, more targeted, uh, this uh, architecture. Yeah. Uh, this is our high level, uh, high level design. Uh, yeah. Uh, for the Linux, uh, for the Quark container, the the Q kernel is in, running inside the um, inside the the guest kernel space, and the uh, and the QWeather is running inside the host. It's just like a common common Linux application. And between uh, 
between the Q kernel and the Q wiser, we use we use uh, a special that's uh, we we special that's uh, call that's Q uh, that's call mechanism to let that's uh, Q kernel and Q wiser to communicate with each other. That's a Q call. Q call is based on a shared mem uh, based on the shared memory based communication between the Q kernel and the Q wiser, and uh, so when Q uh, Q kernel send a request to the Q wiser, we don't need uh, uh, to every time to call a hyper call. Hyper call in the KVM architecture, the hyper calls cost is very high. Based on this uh, shared memory that uh, channel, the we don't need uh, the 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 thread running inside the Q kernel don't need to, to exit the the guest space. Can, so he just use that shared memory queue to communicate with Q wiser so that they can get better performance, get better throughput and better better latency. And inside that uh, Q uh, kernel, uh, we have multiple virtual, CP, virtual CPU. And uh, inside this uh, Q wiser, we have one that's the Q core thread. This Q core thread, Q core thread use the shared memory queue to talk with the Q kernel. So uh, and waiting for the for the message sent from the Q kernel. And when they get the message from the queue, he just process that uh, use the uh, use the Linux Linux kernel system call to to handle the process, uh, handle the system uh, handle the request and then re return the uh, result to the Q kernel. Yeah, uh, we find that uh, so even we use that Q call mechanism, the latency for the for some system call is still uh, latency and throughput for the some system call is still very high. So we also use uh, that's uh, IOU run, that Linux IOU run to uh, to uh, celebrate the process. With IOU run, that's a Q call, and the Linux kernel directly shares some memory, and then Q kernel can send the IO request to the Linux kernel directly. So in this way, we can get better, uh, much better performance than the Q call and the hyper call. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, for the that's uh, our uh, but for the security reason, so far we only only pass the the data plane. Uh, that's the data uh, I/O request to use the URI. Uh, for example, the read write send message, we use I/O URI. For the other metadata, uh, metadata related operation like the open and the socket, this kind of system call, we still use uh, use the Q call, so that we can have better better check another level check in the Q wiser to make sure this uh, this Q call is not a um, is a not compromised uh, compromised the request. Yeah, this is a high level design. Uh, I have a question. So, how did you handle the virtual CPUs, uh, the resources? Uh, so, yeah, uh, in the Q kernel, you may see, you know, four virtual CPUs. But what does that mean at the host level? Is there any oh. sort of map in there? Or? Oh yes. Uh, actually, in the KVM architecture. The virtual CPU is a host process, a host, a host thread. Yeah, and uh, we just use uh, and the run, but uh, it is virtualized in the vCPU. Uh, what in the that's the host kernel, a uh, guest kernel as the virtual CPU, but it's just the thread inside the inside inside the uh, guest inside the host in the guest kernel. It is just the it is a vCPU. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And uh, another uh, year for that, uh, in the Q kernel, we have we should have multiple that's a kernel thread, just like Linux kernel. And uh, for this uh, Linux, uh, for this that uh, kernel thread, we will just use this uh, host thread, just with CPU to handle more to handle this guest thread. But uh, it it's just like a kind of um, <laughs> that's a, that's a user space thread. That's uh, in the Solaris. That's the operating system. We have uh, between the host CP, uh, host thread and the guest and the guest kernel thread. We have multi to multi mapping. <coughs> that's uh, for example, eight uh, eight host thread can handle maybe one hundred or, or more. That uh, that's uh, that's kernel kernel thread. 
Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this architecture is just like, uh, in some level, is just like the uh, divisor. But uh, we have much different also than the divisor. Yeah. Uh, divisor, actually, uh, this quark pro project is also motivated by the divisor project. Uh, we have learned much from divisor. But we have different design and dif uh, different design, and uh, we also do some optimization to our goal is uh, uh, to get better performance. First, the optimization is that uh, we use Rust instead of Go language. I think this is a major, uh, major performance improvement area. Uh, we know that Go language is a very good language, but uh, it uh, is not designed for this kind of um, that's a OS kernel level developing. For example, it uh, it support. It doesn't support system level, that's the memory management. It supports GC and the performance, performance is slower than the Rust. Also, it, uh, yeah, also, uh, it, uh, it have, uh, yeah, let's introduce the, the difference. Uh, first, that uh, for the memory, uh, memory, memory, memory management, that's the Gvisor use, uh, Gvisor have its own, that's the heap management. It's, it have the garbage collection. For the garbage collection, that's the way, that means we cannot control the memory location, fully control that. Before, uh, maybe three years ago, I did some, some this Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes performance tuning. I find that the Kubernetes consume maybe a few hundreds of megabytes of memory. We, I can, when I do tuning, I cannot find where is it. And very likely it's, it is reserved by the GC. And uh, but now uh, for the rest uh, we can plug in our own that's uh, heap management. So far in the two weather, we are using body body algorithm plus slab that's uh, memory management to manage the heap memory. Another is uh, scheduling. That's uh, just now we mentioned that uh, in the in the KVM based that's a uh, virtual machine that's uh, one host uh, host thread map to one virtual CPU, and then we and we have multiple kernel thread. We need to do a scheduling between this virtual CPU and the and the host uh, gas kernel. We need a scheduling. Uh, in the Gvisor implementation, it's based on the go runtime thread scheduling. And uh, in the Quark, we implement our own scheduling. That's uh, optimized for the for the for the. That's the IOU run call and the queue call. Yeah. Uh, another thing is uh, that's uh, gets to the VMM call. Uh, it's, it's use the queue call. So that's the shared memory IO, uh, shared memory queue based. Uh, that's is uh, uh, that is also we when we do the tuning for the divisor, we find that that's uh, divisor when they handle that's a high QPS call. For example, the Read, for example, uh, the, the, the workload like a radius. That's a, for the radius, his, uh, that's a, his, his core is just, a, uh, just a have a, a small workload inside the in memory process and then do the IO. That's a very high performance, uh, high QPS IO. And we find that its performance is the majority, the performance is bad and the majority, that's a, uh, performance penalty is at the hyper call. So we in, we implemented this queue call and the IOU run based call. That's a, uh, for the IOU run, it can also, it can directly bypass the, um, the, 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 the gas kernel can call the host kernel directly and it can fully bypass the, 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 the gas, uh, the host application level. It can, uh, application layer so that it can better performance. Yeah. Any question about that? Uh, hi, hi, Yulin. Uh, yeah. Hi, my name is Cesar. I have a question, please. Um, yeah. So, in order to do the performance optimizations that you're doing between the communication between um, the guest machine and the underlying uh, uh, PMM, yeah. Um, yeah. For example, yeah, sharing the the memory. Do you think that has any impact as far as reducing isolation? 
because rather than going through a hyper code, which is a very sort of uh, narrow interface, right? Um, yeah. I wonder if, if in, in, you know, going through the shared key memory, yes, it's faster, but then it ends up reducing the isolation of the VM in the sense that it makes it easier, let's say for an attacker that compromises a Q kernel to then get into the, into the Q ISOR yeah, actually, this thing we need to consider that secure we need the balance of security and security and the um, and the uh, and the performance. That's the that's the we balance we need to balance this. Actually, uh, in theory, yes, use, we use a shared memory based communication between the Linux kernel and the host kernel. Yeah, this is a, we may get some larger that's a, uh, that's attack service uh, surface that's possible. But actually, I think we'd better do more evaluation for the, um, the concrete that's a, that's the threat model. So far, we haven't got the concrete threat model for for that uh, for this model uh, for this communication prop, uh, communication me mechanism. Um, actually, for the echo user part, we also add some some protection. For example, we only support. Um, we, we only support uh, the data plan operation like the um, like the, uh, the 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 read write and also for the for the uh, for the socket for the metadata operation like the create socket and create a create a file descriptor uh, for this kind of thing we can also uh, also do more protect in the in the uh, in the q core uh, in the that's the q weather layer and uh, also, we we limited the the I O U runs I O U runs I O U runs also based on uh, the file descriptor. They also limited the permission for this this file, this F D. And uh, so far, we haven't concrete that uh, um, threat model to see this uh, this model have security hole. But uh, we will still working on that. I see. I see. So would you say that it let's say compared to a traditional VM, right? Yeah. Uh, would you say that it's slightly less isolation at the benefit of more performance, but even though it's less isolation, you still feel that you still haven't found a um, a threat, a security threat to break to break out of it. Is that, is that would you, would you, would you yes. that right? Yeah, actually another level of security is based on Q kernel is, uh, let's start as a Linux, um, Linux current Linux kernels thread model. This one large part is that uh, it is developed with a C language. So that uh, um, this, uh, this language is not secure. Uh, when this uh, object is freed and then it's hard, this uh, uh -huh. maybe it's this much chance to compromise the whole kernel. But, uh, but in our side, we develop the system with Rust. So at least this level, that's that's attack surface is decreased. I see. Um, mm -hmm. So that is a kind of so this is a kind of balance between the between the security and the performance. Yeah. Um, from my point of my understand that security hole is still kind of bug. We cannot fix all the bugs. Also, we cannot fix all the security hole. So we still need the balance of between that security and performance. Sure. Yeah. And, and one more question, if I may, about the Q kernel itself. Yeah. Um, given that you're running the containers uh, on top of that, correct? Um, does yeah. it mean that the Q kernel has the same concepts of namespaces and let's say maybe C groups, you know, the things that the Linux kernel, the primitives that the Linux kernel has in order to create the containers, do those also exist? In the Q kernel, or 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 not oh, really? Yeah, actually, our goal is that to implement. Uh, our goal is to implement all the object inside the Linux kernel. So far, we doesn't support the C group and the partially support namespace inside the Q kernel. But uh, for uh, but for the Q container, uh, container in the overall who Q uh, quark container is run inside a, a Linux container. Uh, it have. It's running inside one name. Uh, oh, I got you. I got you. Kernel. Yeah, because you're running a single, a single um, sort of container per per VM. So therefore, the, the Q kernel doesn't need to necessarily support multiple yeah. namespaces itself, right? It's like the, the almost like the 
the, the whole thing is part of a single namespace. The underlying Linux kernel is the one that is separating the different yeah. namespaces. I guess. Yeah. Your fossil group for this kind of resource isolation is still based on the host kernels. That's a resource exactly. isolation based on host the C group. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, another question. So on the on the shared memory is uh, have you considered uh, a fallback mechanism? Like if uh, if some users don't want to share the memory. Uh, in, at the, at the expense of performance. Oh yes, uh, actually we uh, actually we support three kind of car. First is a hyper car, a Q car, and the IOU RAM. Actually, this this hyper car is developed at first. So all the all the this Q car Q car request can support a hyper car, and this question. just a switch inside our code. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Okay, uh, I can give more information about uh, our current performance. Uh, we have tested that, uh, test our performance uh, with, uh, and compare that with uh, Kata and the uh, and the Uh Here is our some test result. Uh, yeah, for the, uh, there are some, some, some metrics, first is, uh, is a start of time. That's uh, uh, this is uh, our test result. We use uh, we use a time command to test this. Uh, for the run run C, that's just uh, run C means run run the container that's native run C on the bar metal machine, and uh, his start time is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, six hundred millisecond, and the quark is just like that. It's a uh, have small difference, but for divisor it is a uh, it is still good, but for the kata. It take a much longer time. Uh, I think it's also reasonable. Your Kata start the full line, start a full Linux kernel, and uh, it already done much. I think it already done much optimization, so that uh, uh, this is almost two two second performance. I think is pretty good. But still, it is a full Linux kernel, so startup time that Kata is most slow. Also, another side is the memory overhead. Uh, I use uh, that's uh, busy box to test the uh, memory. You, uh, memory is consumption. For the quark, it uh, take uh, this uh, about about 20, uh, 12 megabytes overhead. Divisor is twenty eight, and the kata is much is the uh, largest. It's because the kata started the full Linux kernel, and uh, uh, and actually for the memory side, we have more benefit with quark. For the kata, the is Linux kernel. When they consume the memory, they cannot read. It cannot release that to the to the host kernel, so its memory consumption will keep the increase. But for the quark, uh, when the application frees the memory, the uh, quark runtime can free that to the host memory, and this free memory can be used by another container. For the divisor, similar thing that is because it's based on the Go runtime, they have garbage collection. That's the memory uh, free memory become unexpected. Yeah. We also do some uh, that's performance uh, throughput uh, comparison with uh, some some this industry benchmark. Uh, first one is the ETCD, and uh, we can say that the ETCD is uh, this for for a majority of this. Uh, or oh, this is this number is QPS for run C for the put operation is QPS is a three thousand uh, three uh, three thousand seven hundred, and the quark is slightly smaller than it for the divisor. Uh, it's uh, it's still good, but for Kata in this uh, this benchmark, it's most uh, slow. Similar thing that's uh, for the ETCD, the Kata is the slowest. Quark uh, Qweather is better, and sometimes it's uh, still better than the Quark, but the majority is the Quark is uh, is faster. Uh, because uh, uh, so far for the Qweather, sometimes it's better than the Quark. I we have no time to do deep. Deep problems tuning, but we think that uh, for any optimization, Qweather can do, Quark can do that either. So in future, we can fill this gap. Yeah, for the radius, that's something. Uh, that's something that Qweather is not good, but Kata is good. Yeah, we can see that this is a 
this is uh, the the radius test result. Run C is our our C because uh, actually we quark is run inside a uh, inside a container. So run C is our C permanent C. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes as uh, we quark can run better than the run C. I think it's uh, maybe the test uh, test problem. And uh, um, and in future because we will use uh, now we are using I O U run. In future we we are target to uh, we may use uh, more advanced technology. For example, R D M A to improve that uh, I O I O performance. Maybe sometimes we can have better performance than the run C. Yeah, but the overall, that's uh, T Weiser's performance is uh, is uh, very low in this uh, high QPS environment, and the Kata is much better. But still, overall, that's uh, Quark's performance is better than the. All right. So what's the um, what's the metric on that on that? Um... Oh, that's QPS. QPS. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, all all this test is based on throughput. So far, I haven't tested the latency yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This uh, NGX test, we can see this uh, uh, quark is much slower than the run C. I, I'm not sure why it happened. Maybe in future, I, I will do more problem tuning for that. And the T-Visor is uh, much slower than the quark, and the Kata is slower than the Q-Visor. This is the QPS. That's, uh, I use that uh, get, the, the most simple one, that's HTTP get test that. Yeah. Uh, also, we uh, we also test some that's a um, complex environment uh, scenario. For example, we use the MyRNDB and MySQL's uh, initial initialization. When we start uh, MySQL, start uh, MyRNDB, it has it have very complex uh, that's system call. We use that for test, and still Quark's performance is better than Gvisor and Kata. Yeah. Oh, oh, this time is a second. How much time it will take uh, to start uh, MyMDB my and the MySQL? Yeah. In, in summary, that's why the memory overhead is overhead start time and performance is the best uh, in these three three uh, container runtime, secure container runtime. Yeah. Any question about this uh, performance? I have a, a question also, um, Julien. Have you done any performance benchmarks um, measuring how many, let's say, containers I could put on a host with just a bare run C versus, you know, um, with Quark and, and with the other things? In other words, you know, it, it seems like these, these tests are just for a single sort of container, but I wonder if you start running, let's say, you know, if you get a big host and you start running maybe 100 or 150 containers, right? And then you do the same okay. with Quark. How many, you know, can you run and get the same performance, right? The capacity is sort of on. Oh, uh, I haven't, I haven't tested that. Yeah, that's a good uh, benchmark. Yeah, in future we will add this. Okay. So far our focus is, based, is the majority based on the throughput. And then right. later we will right. test this kind of density, yeah. Because sometimes you may get surprised, it may not scale linearly as you think. It may, you know, it may, it, or it may, or it may scale in early, one, one never knows, right? But uh, people are often looking at, okay, how much stuff can I run on my server, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. and, and how much capacity, how much can I get out of it as far as workloads? Yeah, yeah, I, I, that makes sense. You mean in the future, we will, we will add this, uh, this kind of benchmark, yeah. Yeah, uh, the last part is, uh, I, I can give some demo, yeah, uh, actually, we can let me. Oh, oh, where is that? Oh, this. Uh, here we have different. Uh, uh, this did. We have different uh, command to run run C, run Quark, Quark debug, and run SC. That's the Q weather, and a uh, T weather, and the Kata. Yeah, they have different runtime. Here I, I just demo that's a, a demo uh, execution for the B shell, uh, run uh, B shell with Ubuntu. Let's use a Quark. Yeah. Yeah. This is a uh, this is a, this is a Quark start the um, 
start the uh, the Ubuntu, and we can see we have just, just like a common common shell, and go to EPC. We can do the cat, for example, system. Just like just like this, this is a straightforward thing, and uh, yeah, we can also. Uh, I can give more demo like, uh, for example, DD. This is uh, for some for some disk performance. Yes, for example, now for this test, let's use the Quark release version, and uh, his performance is 160, uh, 160 megabytes in my in my machine. And uh, if we use run C, that's the that's the that's the divisor. It's much slower. It is much slower, and the kata is better than the uh, than the and the uh, than than the divisor. Yeah. The oh, this time it's uh, year one hundred. Yeah. Still, that's uh, uh, quark is much better than the light. We can also run some etcd. This etcd use uh, use quark. The star etcd, and then I can run etcd benchmark. This put list MVCC put etc. And the benchmark. Okay. This is the put benchmark. Oh, why this time is uh, maybe you, why this time is uh, much slower? Maybe I, I, I just do the test, add some regression, performance regression. You're only 1,000, that's uh, weird. Yeah, but uh, yeah, maybe I, my, my code add some regression. Yeah, this is another benchmark. This is, uh, this is the least keep alive. This kind of thing, and we can also oh this log. Oh, I I forgot the uh, disable log, but uh, I can add more logs. Debug log. And uh, let's uh, go back and run the bash. And we can see in the log. Uh, we can see we got uh, so many this kind of system call from the application. Uh, this is system read and F states this kind of system call. Uh, this is a log. And uh, the last call. The last call is a uh, oh here you select. P select and uh, if we apply LS and they have more car generated here, etc. This is uh, the demo. Yeah, this last part, any more question? I have a question also. So um, I have two questions. One of them is if I wanted to run, let's say Quark on the cloud, right? Let's say I go to, you know, AWS or, or G, you know, GCP and I get a, 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 a EC2 instance, let's say on AWS, right? Which is itself yeah. a VM. And I want to run Quark on it. You know, what do I need? Is, is, that, is that possible? Or do I need nested virtualization enabled? What, what's, what, what are the requirements? Well, firstly, I haven't tried that. And uh, then it's possible, but we need to make sure that's the, uh, for, for example, for the Amazon, I heard that uh, his uh, virtual machine is based on the KVM, and we need to make sure that the, the that's virtualization this um, feature that's uh, named I forget name just to make sure that's uh, recursive that's the uh, virtualization can work enabled so yeah, that yeah. yeah yeah the nested nested virtualization they call it uh, in, oh. um, yes yeah I don't I think Amazon doesn't support it but I think Google Google's GCP does have an option to yeah yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Do you know Ricardo? Sir, is yeah. that correct? Yeah, 
they they supported it, and also Azure supported just the virtualization. So okay, cool. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And and that would be enough, uh, Julien. So let's say if you have a machine, as long as the machine supports nested virtualization, would that be something? Would that be enough? Um, or are there any other requirements that you need? Yeah, I believe that's enough, but I haven't tested it. Okay, got it. Yeah, we are common that's a KVM based virtual machine. Okay, so it should work. Yeah, you may want to try that because that's, you know, the most common use case you're going to see, right? People are renting their machines from the cloud all the time. And and, yeah. and, and so they're going to quickly ask about that. Mm -hmm. All right, good. And the other question that I had was, are there any limitations on the workloads that you can run inside of the, um, the, the container uh, with Quark? Are there any limitations that you know of? Yeah. As, yeah, that's uh, one important uh, Part that's Linux compatibility. Uh, so far, we support 200, more than 200 tens. That's a uh, system cars. Uh, there's still some system car we don't support. I got you. Yeah, we have tested that, uh, like, uh, uh, test some some common service like MySQL, the NGX, this kind of thing. But uh, maybe there's some uh, some application if they use a special system car, and. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't support that now. But now we are working hard to add more support and improve this, this compatibility. Yes, good. And, and, and other than system calls, let's say things like um, like procfs, you know, slash proc, slash sys, are they also compatible uh, with Linux when you're inside of the container? Do they look exactly the same as they, they would on a Linux kernel or, or no? Oh yeah, uh, actually that's a good question. For the proc, uh, for example, pro, for the proc, uh, proc folder, we, we support some of them. It's still a subset of the Linux. We not support all of them. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. got it, got it. So you would say a lot of workloads run in it, but I'm sure that there are certain workloads that either they use the system calls that you don't implement yet, or they do access things like proc that probably are not yeah. implemented yet that uh, right now don't work. Maybe in the future they, they will work, right? Is that yeah. correct? Yes, you're right, yeah. Okay, and, and one final question. If you were to launch a pod, you know, in a, in a Kubernetes pod, uh, does this work with pods? Because, you know, in pods, you have multiple containers. If they're sharing some of the namespaces. They're not sharing some of the other namespaces. For example, the network namespace, they share, right? But the other namespaces, they don't uh, typically yeah. share. The, 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 have you tried this with, with Kubernetes pods? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we haven't do the full test that. Firstly, we support that's one, uh, actually one, uh, how to say, one is a pure kernel. Uh, is a, can, we, we name it a sandbox. Multiple container can run inside of one sandbox. Just uh, use uh, use C to start. Uh, just like run C start, uh, start the, the container inside a sandbox, that, that's possible. Um, but uh, but, uh, for, but uh, so far, we have implemented some namespace inside a Q kernel, but we didn't fully test that. Okay. Okay. So yeah. we haven't tested that for the part. Yeah, yeah. You may want to also uh, uh, work on that because that's also going to be a very common use case. You know, people are going to say, "Okay, that's great that I can use, let's say, Docker," but uh, you know, yeah. most people are like beyond Docker, right? They want to use it with things like Kubernetes. Uh, so, so that's something that I, I would also recommend that you. Uh, that you put yes. Some on. yes. Yeah. This our yeah. This our target. They must be be run be, be able to run that inside the Kubernetes. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, we are also uh, coll uh, collaborating with uh, with one company. That's one cloud provider company to work on this. And uh, while you piping, uh, this this kind of requirement is a key requirement, a critical in the critical path to support Kubernetes. And uh, we are collaborating collaborating with them and try to add this uh, support. Yeah. Uh, do you have any users now or, or not yet? Or this, or, uh, or no, uh, we are working with uh, two cloud provider. One of them is trying to uh, trying to put some production, production workload, but uh, we, we are doing that uh, uh, collaborated together, do that step by step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far, we have no production deployment now, but uh, someone is trying trying to do that. Yeah, that 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 cloud provider now is using Gvisor and uh, trying to move to Quark if Quark can meet their requirement. Yeah. 
Got it. I had a few questions. Yeah. Um, so the on the performance metrics, are you going to make those available? The the slides that you presented today, I I think oh. I have some people who'd be interested in looking at those. Yeah, actually, all of them is is inside the 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 Quark Quark Git Git uh, Git's that's the folder that's performance PDF, and another thing is how to test that, how to run that. This is how to report this test result. For example, uh, how to run this uh, start of time and how to run different, uh, run the etcd, etc. All is put here. And the test result is uh, put in the promise.pdf. Yeah. Right, great. Yeah, I think it'd be also interesting to see um, some of the CPU utilization overhead with uh, uh, between all those uh, that you compared against. Yes. So the other questions I have are about the, the project. So you mentioned having a couple cloud providers uh, interested yeah. in, in testing it out. Uh, when I first looked at it, granted that was actually like a, a month or two ago, it was unclear to me like who's sponsoring it, how many people are involved in the project. Um, I was just curious yeah. what the state of the project is today. Uh, so far, actually we just open source this project last month. And uh, uh, we are in the initial stage now. But, yeah, we uh, so far we have no no this uh, um, solid sponsor now. Uh, so how many contributors do you have today? I I'm just curious what the like the is this just a, a start off as a personal project or uh, a work project or what? Oh oh actually. Oh, what's your question? Yeah, for the contributor, your majority is from our company. And now some 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 cloud provider is trying to contribute for that, but not 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 now. Not contribute now. Yeah. So okay. I was just yeah, I was just curious. So is Quark containers like your company's uh, product that you've been working on? Oh, it's already open sourced, yeah, and uh, uh, open source is Apache license, yeah, and the majority contributor is from our company now. Okay, yeah, I was just trying to understand like where the where the sponsorship of it was coming from. Yeah. Yeah, so I think his question is more about like uh, how did you get started with uh, with the project? How how did I guess the idea became uh, to fruition because of you know some of the limitations from GVisor, and then just started that. And... Yeah, yeah. Actually, this motivated from the GVisor. I think at that time, quite a few people have have thinking, have thought to to start uh, to to rewrite GVisor with Rust, and uh, I uh, we, we just started working on that. Yeah. All right, sounds great. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So yeah, this is this is great. I think I, I mean it's uh, exciting to see this and uh, it. Yeah, it's an alternative to something like Gvisor and Kata and yeah. Um, and then you already applied for Sandbox, right? So for the CNC. Yes. Yeah, that's something we we plan to donate this project to the to the CNCF. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the things that you uh, want to get out of uh, um, being in the CNCF? Uh, what do you expect to get more contributors, more community um, support? Uh, so yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's the uh, motivation is a uh, more uh, more contributor. Another thing is uh, align with CNCF ecosystem. We hope we we can align in and put inside the CNCF ecosystem, be part of them. Got it. Yeah. All right, we got ten more minutes. Uh, more questions. No. 
Well, uh, I think that's about it. So yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for presenting and uh, we'll keep in touch. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.